Five faithful are swaying back and forth and hope to get their team listing in the right direction. Ohio State's lost two in a row. Nebraska coming in struggling this season, but still with a couple of potent offensive weapons. Here's the starting lineup for the Huskers. Duran Petaway led the Big Ten in scoring a season ago. He's third this year. Ohio State starting five, a familiar one, and led by the sensational freshman D'Angelo Russell. The Big Ten's second leading scorer and the leading freshman scorer in the country. Glad to have you with us. Thursday night showcase. Reese Davis and Dan Dockage here. Larry Serrato about to put the ball into the air. They'll jump it up. And Ohio State will have it first. Shannon Scott with the ball. D'Angelo Russell, quick shot. He's really struggling for the first time in his freshman season. He's not shot well. Now there's 14 of his last 42 field goal attempts Dan. You know what he's doing? He, he's a casual player by na nature. I mean, he's one of those guys that makes basketball look easy. But I think he's going up into a shot casual. He's not getting much legs into it as I've watched the last couple of games on film. And I thought right there he came off the screen nice. Just didn't jump into a shot. Shot it short. Ohio State typically really good baseline out of bounds. Nebraska had it defended well. Here is Russell who was spending time earlier today looking at some video of earlier games with their offensive coordinator, Greg Paul. That's it's basically what Greg is. Jay Sean Tate goes to the bucket and draws the foul. Man, Reese, that, that's too easy. I mean, it's one thing to make a move, but when you make a move left and you're left-handed taking you into the lane, watch the defense. Leslie Smith, nobody comes over. He beat four guys. Watch the reach right there. Shields reaches, Petaway reaches. The foul was on Petaway. It's his first. And Tate, who's not a great free throw shooter, gets the three-point play. And Nebraska defense hasn't been the problem. Offense has. And now the Buckeyes throwing a press on him. Yeah, defense has been pretty good. Actually, really good. But that time, it was not. A little lazy. Fair to say, a little lazy. <laughs> Pressing nearly going. Siobhan Shields. And Walter Pitchford knocks down the first shot. He, he can be a knockdown shooter for that. Yeah, and he did the exact opposite of what Russell's been doing. When he came off the screen, he bounced right into that shot, Reese. He, he's not a great jumper by any means, but he was strong going up. Sam Thompson is a great jumper. He had it knocked away and recovers inside 25 on the shot clock. Here's Scott, talented assist, man. He loses it, gets it back. And Teddy Valentine says the ball is kicked. It'll be a turnover in Nebraska. We'll have it. Here is Tim Miles. Miles in his third year at Nebraska. Two games above 500 during that time. He took the Cornhuskers to the NCAA tournament a year ago while turning in a Big Ten Coach of the Year performance. But this year has been a struggle. The Huskers have lost their last five, all but one of them by double figures. The blowout Sunday at the hands of Iowa led to the much-discussed banishment of the Cornhuskers from their palatial digs in the locker room. <laughs> Jim Miles' mistake was making it public. <laughs> yeah, he would have got out anyway, but... Yeah, look at Tate. Tate is just... You and I were talking before the game. We both like the way he plays. He gets stuff done. Also forcing one up, and Penaway pulls it away. Now, to your point, it, Tate really, earlier this year, with that Mata didn't like the energy early in games, he put Jay Sean Tate in the starting lineup, and even though the Buckeyes lost a couple lately, it's really worth really wonders as... Nebraska gains the lead with a quick bucket, 4-3 in the early going, so a better start for Nebraska certainly than they had against Iowa at home on Sunday. Well, you couldn't have a worse start. No. <laughs> I turned it on, as I said, it was 48-18. to 18. And that's bad enough, but then when I sat down and watched the whole game, it was worse to get to 48-18 if that's possible. Amir Williams missed in close, and now... Petaway gives it up. Leslie Smith couldn't decide what to do and ended up turning it over. This is going to be a lot. Alley oop. Thompson. Thompson from he is a regular fixture on the Sports Center top 10, and that might make the cut by the end of the night, too. But three great dunkers in the Big Ten. I, I think the Williams kid from Indiana is fantastic. And, De you know, Dawson, Brandon Dawson is terrific. Uh, so, and then you had Sam Thompson. Shannon Scott with the steal and the easy yeah. layup. Yeah, I don't blame Tim Miles here. Tim Miles is going to go nuts with somebody. 
Didn't want to wait on the first media timeout. Couldn't wait that much longer. Ohio State's up by three. Anybody run past you, and particularly Sam Thompson. When Sam Thompson runs past you, this is what happens. And then you got to be on Sports Center, and then you got your friends talking about you, and then you got all kind of difficulties in your life. I don't, you know, the good news is, is that there weren't any Huskers close enough to him to actually right. be on Sports Center. Right. So Tim Miles makes a substitution. He goes to Moses Abraham, who hadn't played the last couple of games in Petaway. Was looking for Abraham inside. Ball was deflected, so Nebraska will keep it with 14 on the clock. You know, in theory, Abraham and Pittsford should be really good together. Abraham, a low post guy. Pittsford, a four man that can make you stretch the defense, shoot threes. Lazy pass from Petaway to turnover. Here's Thompson for another dunk. Yes! Yes! This is going to get ugly if Nebraska doesn't get its act together pretty fast. Luis, you've been doing the Big Ten. I've been doing the Big Ten. This is as lackadaisical as I've seen a team in my four or five years of doing these games. Abraham has his shot rejected. Russell lost it for a second, but here come the Buckeyes. Scott. Three ball. Twelve to four. And Miles is calling an offense but figuratively perhaps throwing up his hands in exasperation. Darren Smith being pressured. And here's Shields. And now Petaway, who appears, Dan and Neil, are going to be trying to get some teammates involved. This Pittsburgh fires from three. No good. Shannon Scott pulls it away for the Buckeyes, and Ohio State's on the run. Russell. Russell for three. He'd only hit five of his previous 18 three-point attempts, and the freshman knocks it down from the corner, and it's a double-figure lead already for Ohio State. Javon Shields double. And right there was a clinic on how to use your hands, get them in the passing lanes to save baskets. Three or four times, open guy for Nebraska. Head away with a tough shot. Yeah, you might as well, right? I mean, yeah. get everybody else involved for a little bit, and then if they're not going to do anything, now you got to stop the second leading score in the league, last year's leading score. Uh, he, he can, there's no question that he can score now. He'll... Uh, the thing that Miles has been talking about is to try to keep him from taking as many bad shots as Jay Sean Tate knocks one down. Miles says that he puts Petaway in position to take four or five bad shots a game in the clock. He has to do it. He's the one to do it. He doesn't want him to add to that total earlier well, in the clock. I, I think that's a cop-out. I, I think that what happens here is, and there's one of your best shots right there. I, I, know, I know Miles says that. But Petaway doesn't allow himself to get into the offense. He's one of those guys, gets the ball, gives it up, doesn't involve, and just wants it back. That's bad business for offense. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Dish. Only the hopper from Dish gives... Henry's, you got no shot. Okay, how much of this, to be fair to the players and to look at it from a different point of view, how much of it is... Bruised psyche, wounded confidence because things really haven't gone their way. The season hasn't been what they expected. Is Russell? Russell just sensational <laughs> to Jay Sean Tate. How about splitting that Husker double team and finding Tate cutting? Yeah, well, Russell isn't the guy to play if you're lacking confidence. Let's put it that way because he'll make you look bad. I think there might be one observer particularly interested in that last play by D'Angelo Russell. By the way, Buckeyes have hit their last seven shots. Now look, just across where I'm sitting, Dan, Phil Jackson, president of the Knicks. Javon Shields driving, some contact, no call. Pittsburgh gets another opportunity, and he puts it in for the cornhouse. Because there's Phil, he's got good mid-court seats here to have a look at Russell, who we assume will be headed for the NBA draft with the worst team in the NBA. Fixing that, I think zero and white would be a good place to start. When, you know, Russell has the personality for it. He's a showman type of kid. And I think Russell has improved during the course of the year. Not there. <laughs> but, but, as soon as we start burning. Right. 
Shaquan Shields right down the boulevard and the academic All-American just got that news today. Schools in for the Buckeyes and Shields cuts the lead to nine. Well, you know, I keep hearing this. I hear it certainly with the Yankees and you know, it takes a certain personality to handle New York City. And to me, Russell would have that personality. I mean, you got to be able to make plays, and you know, it's a pretty good play right here. <laughs> but you also have to have the personality, and I think Russell does. And I, and I do think his defense has certainly improved. The shot selection has improved. He's just gotten better under Thad Mata, Greg Paulus, and the rest. You see Phil looking on, and, and look, nobody's rushing D'Angelo Russell out of here. Those guys who cover college basketball, he can stay as long as he likes it. And, and, yeah, from my point of view, but the assumption is that he'll be on his way out Could could you build a franchise around him? How high would you take him if you were in that situation? Man, I, I don't know that you can you know, Build a franchise that yeah, to me is that's tough. What, uh, before, and I'm, I'm not yeah, that's the only guy I think you can build a franchise around. I think Frank Kamis is going to be a serviceable guy good player but I'm not sure you can build the franchise when I think building a franchise. I'm thinking Duran, you know, I'm thinking Pretty nice. Nick Fuller after the deflection by Mark Loving, who's checked into the game for Ohio State. Nick Fuller's in the game because he's going to give you energy. You know, he, he, he's a kid that's dying to play. And you saw right there, when you're dying to play, you play hard, the ball finds you. Loving, who hasn't hit a three pointer since the Maryland game, found Sam Thompson, who knocks one down, and the Buckeye leads back to 10 as Thompson. He started one of his first 14 from three in Big Ten plays. Shot it a little bit better of late to go with that explosive to the rim game that we've already seen. Good look from Petaway and Fuller cutting to the basket and missed the layup. You know, Pittsburgh is a guy who does pretty good things when he's on the block. This is the most important kid right there. Here's Loving snapping that three-point drought. He was suspended for three games, didn't make one in his last couple. He's a terrific shooter, one of the best three-point shooters in the country. Why do you call him the key? Well, because in the NCAA tournament, you got to make shots. And teams are going to load up against Russell. They have to. All right? Ohio State doesn't really have anywhere to go on the post. Amir Williams isn't going to beat anybody in the NCAA tournament, so you got to make shots. Who's the best shot maker other than Russell? The best three-point shooter maybe in the conference. You know, he's among the leaders in the country is Mark Loving, and he's got to get back going. And he's top five in the country, a little over 50 percent on the season. Here's Russell. Rattles out. Pitchford rebounds it for the Huskers. Approaching the halfway point of the first half. Reese Davis, Dan Dockett's with you in Columbus. Ohio State has lost its last two off to a good start at home. Taran Petaway. A wild shot to Cam Williams. Retro freshman from Baltimore. There's a good look from Russell there. Trey McDonald can't handle inside. And Ohio State will go to the break with a 13-point lead. And after the commercial break, we'll be joined by Joe Lenardi. He's in the studio to talk bracketology on Bracket Builder Week. Down the stretch and through the Big Ten tournament to really move out of the range that they're in. And if they don't, well, that's on them. And Joe Dan Dockage, uh, I live in Indy. Indiana lost yesterday to Northwestern. Where are they right now? Well, thinking that I'd be talking to you, Dan, I thought I'd drop the Hoosiers out altogether. But uh, let's keep them in, in that still 8, 9, 10 range. And they did the one thing you can't do at this time of the year if you're a middle-seeded team, and that's have a bad loss. Now, I know it's on the road, and I know Northwestern is improving, but you can't do that if you want to be where they want to get. And that's, you know, to the second weekend. And they're on the verge of seeding their way out of that. All right, Joe, we'll hear more from Joe and Nardi at halftime. More bracketology. He is here all week from ESPN. Working bracketology in Sports Center games and half times is you know, Sunday. It's going to be two weeks away. And I know, Dan, that you really love all of the speculation as Benny Parker lets the three go too long. You love all of the speculation because you're totally uncertain about when you'll find out about when the 68 team field will be revealed. Huh? I say it all the time. March 15th, there's a show. <laughs> There is a show, pretty popular one too. People will tell you, they will tell you who is in the tournament on March 15th. I want to tell you who's on Saturday showcase right now as part of Bracket Builder Week. How about this Missouri Valley showdown? First time you've had 
two matches between ranked teams in the same season, Northern and Wichita State, Northern Iowa, and Ali for Lokmanesh, now on the Nebraska staff. A former Northern Iowa Panther, he came by before the game and said, hey, be nice to my Panthers at game day on Saturday. I was like, I don't have to. They don't need my help right now. We'll follow that up, as you saw, with Texas and Kansas. The Jayhawks trying to win another Big 12 title. They've won 10 in a row, but they've got company right now in Iowa State, Oklahoma, West Virginia, making a push as well as Ali starts his coaching career. He's part of that terrific Northern Iowa team that went to the Sweet 16, working with Tim Miles on on his staff now. He had the ultimate, what are you doing? Great shot yeah. <laughs> against Kansas, yeah. right? Like, what is wrong? Oh, wow, nice. All right. The foul is on Parker. It's his first. Scott missed a couple. Mark Loving goes back. Looks like he got fouled. No call. Ball's on the deck. Abraham's fighting for it. Tita Bates Diop is in there, too. He's the one that emerges with the basketball. And possession arrow is going to give the ball to Cornhuskers. Well, I like that kid, Kata Bates Diop. He is, he's the kind of guy like they had last year with LaQuinton Russell. He can shoot it, he can score in bunches. He's getting better and better as he learns the defensive end and what's a good shot and what's not a bad shot. Again, he's a guy like Loving that can score quickly. And you're going to need that as you play the Big Ten and NCAA tournament. Sam Thompson with a terrific defensive play. Great hands from Thompson to take it away from Shields. But guys, with Scott running the show, and Scott's assist total, he's top 15 in the country, averaging a little more than six assists per game. They've been down a little bit the last few games. Part of that, product of Ohio State not shooting quite as well. And there's Diop on two. Shoots it from 21 and shot it about 25. And then he throws one in. I think the whistle blew first. Yes. And the foul is going to be called on Shields. Now here is Shannon Scott. And part of this, and the increase in the assist, is because he was running the point early in the season a little bit more. Russell's handling it more now, but he sort of gave way there in Kraft earlier in his career. Yeah, for those of you playing Ohio State bingo, I will say the name Aaron Kraft. So that feels a square for you, but no question about it. Aaron Kraft and him shared the point guard spot, but you know, I'll say this between Shannon Scott's always been a good defender, but now I think Sam Thompson has joined him. And again, that, but that's what will make Ohio State, I think, very dangerous in both of the tournaments. I tell you, Nebraska would be well served if Russell scores again. If they're going to double, they better get shoulder to shoulder because he'll split it otherwise. There's no question about it. Like, if you're going to double, then don't give a gap. Because one of the things that modern-day kids playing college basketball can do is split a double team with the dribble. Whether it's a big and little, little and it doesn't matter. You give room, they're gone. Duran Petaway trying to answer, and he does. Petaway with the three. Russell Scott, and it's, if you can have guys knock down shots, and you have two guys, as Bates Diop is fouled going to the bucket, you have two guys, and Russell and Scott, who can find open shooters, make some of them, and Modest Team's going to be dangerous in March. Right now. 12 at stake. Stanley Johnson in Arizona, DeLon Wright in Utah. A couple of guys who are up for several postseason awards. I had a chance to see Stanley Johnson in person last week when college game day was in Tucson for UCLA in Arizona. What a what an impressive freshman he is as Ty Webster travel. I think Stanley Johnson's one of those guys that does you a favor as an opponent if he shoots a jump shot. You know what I mean? I mean, I'm not saying he's bad at it. I'm just saying that when he gets going to the basket, man, is he hard to stop. And ones, knocking guy. I mean, he's just strong and talented around the rim. Jay Williams and I talking to him before the game Saturday. He talked about how, how he lost weight, uh, more sculpted body, sort of understood the speed of the college game now. And hasn't taken him a half to no, a half, for no. sure. He was a specimen. Shot clock headed toward tens. D'Angelo Russell gets a screen from Amir Williams. Mark Loving almost had that pivot foot slide on him. Didn't get the shot to go in. The rebound by David Rivers, who's checked into the game. Yes, that was a much better job, Leslie Smith and Petaway, of the double team on the ball screen. Leslie Smith can really move his feet. He's a kid I really like. He just had so many injuries, but he's a willing defender. Ty Webster is 
is really being counted on before the season to maybe solidify the point guard position. He's had a tough year, and as Russell penetrated, the foul was called on the floor, and then Rivers is going to be called for the foul. It's his first, fifth team foul on the Cornhuskers. Have to be careful. And the Buckeyes here. Loving's curling to the basket, but they throw it out top to Tate. Does anybody get more dunks on that about plays in Ohio State? No, it's a great set that they have, and the kid that does it is coming back yeah. in Sam Thompson. Two things Ohio State does really well, as you mentioned, out of bounds plays offensively, but defensively, they guard the out of bounds better than anybody. They work on it hard, taking away the inbounds. They switch everything, they put it big on the ball. Benny Parker just got called for that foul, his second. Now on the next foul, Ohio State will be shooting free throws. Sam Thompson has returned. Javon Shields coming back for Nebraska as well as Webster, who had a rough couple of possessions. We'll have a seat. Taryn Smith on the floor. Along with Pitchford, too. Now Thompson's back on the floor, so Nebraska needs to be careful at the rim. Walter Pitchford is taking a little peek Thompson's way right now, but now he's got his back turned. He better be careful. And Thompson goes to the corner instead. Well, they were trying to get it to Tate, and they had him, and they missed him, and Tate is letting Shannon Scott know. <laughs> Like, dude, you're among the nation's leaders in assists. That was an easy one for you. But Tate didn't get the shot before, just take it himself, and he gets an extra point out of it. Yeah, Shannon Scott said, What's wrong with you? I knew he could not get a three. It's only his third three of the year. He has a good looking stroke. I'm telling you, that kid's going to be a star. I don't know if he's an NBA guy, but I know he's going to be an all Big Ten guy. He's into double figures as Rivers shoots from the baseline. Thompson skies for the rebound. Scott looking for somebody to run with it. It's Tate. Scott takes it himself. I don't think Tim Miles gonna have enough timeouts today. <laughs> uh, he, I mean, Tim's one of the good guys in coaching. He's done a really good job in Nebraska, but this thing has gotten a little sideways on the Huskers right now. And meanwhile, they've really uncomfortable Nebraska team. Like you mentioned, Tim Miles, he's a great guy, and I'm looking at him on the sidelines. He is totally uncomfortable with his team. He, he, he doesn't know whether they're going to play one possession to the other. They don't know whether they're going to, I mean, it, truly, I, the only word that I can use, Reese, is uncomfortable. They just, they don't have anything they can hang their hat on, and they, they're not certainly hanging it on just playing really hard. That way has it deflected. Thompson beats everybody to the basketball, saves it for Scott, and he couldn't quite handle it, and Siobhan Shields gets it back. Now Shields one on two. Big collision. Tate goes down. No call. I like that. Under the basket, let him play. I would too. And, and Tate gave the requisite yell too. And in the bucket is Russell. He's fouled going up and he'll shoot a couple. Now producer Bart Fox is showing it again. I think that right here Shields kind of jumps straight up ish. Straight up, -ish. Yeah, straight up, yeah. She doesn't like plow him over. He kind of is going up, and the ball hits Tate in the stomach. You know what's really good about that with Tate? He cut the angle because he got out far enough from the arc. Tate's one of those guys that just knows how to play basketball offensively around the rim, take a charge, be in the right spot, get a tip in. He just knows. D'Angelo Russell for. And look, he's been a good free throw shooter on the year, over 76%, but now he's made just two of his last eight free throws after missing a couple there. But that Mata is saying today that one of the things that they were talking to him about is occasionally he'll, you know, he's a good shooter, but occasionally he'll short on it a little bit. They want him to get that full extension on the shot. Thompson, full extension, bottom of the bucket. A 20-point lead for Ohio State. You always like to see seniors improve. You know, you mentioned it. Tough, tough stretch. One for 12 for Thompson. But he's out here early every single time I have been here. He works and works and works on his three. And he's a terrific defender. He's an all-defensive team guy. But man, he's gotten better offensively. Foul's called on Trey McDonald. That's his first. 
Journey to the tourney continues Saturday at 2 o'clock Eastern on ESPN. The top two teams in the Missouri Valley, Northern Iowa and Wichita State. Panthers led by Seth Tuttle. If you haven't seen Seth Tuttle, go ahead and check him out against Wichita State where the Wheat Shockers haven't lost in 31 home games. That number, 61-4 and four since the start of last season, that's not bad. You mentioned Tuttle, but if you haven't seen a crowd... At Wichita State, then you're in for a treat too, because that is a crazy loud, shows up really well on TV. I'm looking forward to getting there for game day on Saturday, and they say they're going to pack the arena. Not for game a, I don't day. Uh, for no game doubt. Day. I don't doubt them for a second. Oh, that place is crazy. There's nothing to do in Wichita. <laughs> There, there's minor league hockey. We've been asked to drop the puck in a minor league hockey game. Are you going to do it? I don't think it's going to happen. There's, there's too much preparation. I mean, I don't know. Maybe, you guys, maybe are you like the that. president? Preparation <laughs> to drop a puck? Not to drop the puck for the show. Just walk in, drop, drop, the drop the puck. puck. Get a camera walk guy. Out. Walk out. Don't fall. I don't know if I was supposed to mention that or not. But maybe we will drop the puck now that you've encouraged us. It's <laughs> too much preparation. Look at Pedway made a nice move there. Tate was falling in. Pedway gave him a little shove. He was going to get an extra one. Pitchford was if he missed. Too much preparation. Those Friday nights before game day, that, I mean, people are deep in research right now. The ball is providing, you know, some notes and nuggets as Russell pulls up from the elbow. You see his feet? Do you see his feet right there? If we can show that again. He is so uncomfortable with his lower body shooting the ball. Now his uh, shield gets. Is that fatigue, Dan? Because, well, I know he, these guys play a million games in the summer with AAU, but the intensity here is ratcheted up. It's longer than a high school season. Can that be fatigue? It can. It, it, it really can be. And Thad Mott is one of the smartest guys with what he does with his team. He does not overwork them this time of year. Your oh, guy is balling. He's got a dozen. He's hit all five of his shots. Deshaun Tate leads the Big Ten in field goal percentage. He was shooting 58% coming in. He hasn't hurt that much. He's shooting 100% tonight. Pittsburgh spinning. Tate with a rebound. To your point, it absolutely could be fatigue. I mean, the, the basketball now, you can play in the summers with, you know, your team, you can practice. There's no question it could be fatigue. Cam Williams leaves it a little short. By the time Nebraska's trying a little something, throwing it in the zone now. Now here's Petaway. This going out. Yep. Double team because he wants. Aaron Smith in the corner. You saw what I saw. He was itchy right there, Pedro. I don't blame him. I don't either. Smith knocked it in for him. And so now Nebraska will see if Zone can slow down Ohio State a little bit. Cam Williams missed a shot last time. Tate's hit a three. Now he goes baseline and the easy layup. That was just no effort by Pitchford. Pitchford is gassed. A little kind of shot fake. It wasn't a great shot fake and just stepped right around Pitchford and laid it in. Tate scored inside, possession of goal. Now he just goes outside. 18 point lead for the Buckeyes and three quarter. I mean, Jeff Pauls is going absolutely nuts with D'Angelo Russell. D'Angelo Russell did not get out on uh, Petaway. <laughs> Jeff Bowles is a defensive coordinator for Ohio State, the assistant. He just lost his mind. William shot fake and kicks it back out as we head toward a minute to play here in the first half in Columbus. The Ohio State lead, which has been as large as 20, sits at 15. Shot clock at 10. Williams going to try it again. This time it's on. And Williams did a great job right there of adjusting. Last shot, he kind of lazy got into it, and it was short. That time, he ran into the shot, got his legs under him. That's just being a smart basketball player by Cam Williams. He's a guy who has a bright future, too, a 2,000-point scorer in high school. Richard last year largely because of Mono as Williams gets the rebound and hands it over to Russell. And the shot box off so the Buckeyes can take the final shot of the half. 
What has been a solid one for the Buckeyes coming off perhaps their worst performance of the year in the loss to Michigan on the road Sunday afternoon. And Mata will use his use it or lose it timeout with an 18 point lead. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by. He got a variety of moves, but I just thought when he shot that, his legs were a little bit dead. And when your legs are a little bit dead, you kind of kick them a little bit to give you a little burst once in a while. We we'll see if he has one more burst before halftime that potentially could give Ohio State a 20 or 21 point lead. Russell working on Rivers. Pulls up. Rattles out. McDonald loving puts it back. It won't go. And loving rushed himself a little bit, perhaps had just a little more time than he realized, but still an excellent first half for the Buckeyes and another struggle for Tim Miles and the Huskers. It is very similar to the game against Iowa in the first half in which they trail 42. He is asked to do a lot. He's a very willing defender. He'll rebound. He likes the challenge of taking on the best guards against Indiana in here. Yogi Ferrell was going, and Russell went to his coaches and demanded to guard him. So he does a lot, and it can wear you out. Now, now, what are they going to say? You know, you ask them at practice, you know, how is he feeling? Right. Is he fatigued? They're going to say no, obviously, and that's what they said today. But you wonder, you wonder a little bit just if it's just See, enough to throw it off just a little. I'll tell you right, there was a lazy pass. He could have taken one more dribble down hard and, and entered it. Shoulder to shoulder, shoulder squared up. He did, and he flipped it in there, turnover. Now, some of that is he's got a lot of creativity no and, and a lot of confidence right. in his ability to spin the ball and these kick passes, which we saw against Iowa that for a missed layup, and then again against Northwestern earlier this year for an easy one. So No, no doubt. But I, I thought that particular one race, I, I just thought that was lazy. And I'm going to say he's tired come out of halftime, but it yeah. just seemed lazy to me. Pitchford kicks it in the corner to beat the shot clock in the corner, and Terrence Smith does. So Nebraska knocks down the three to cut it to 15 in the early moments of the second half. I think Terrence Smith's going to be really good. He played for Bobby Hurley, you know, the same... St. Anthony's in Jersey City and legendary program. I think he's going to be really good. Scott was looking for Amir Williams. And it'll be a turnover. And Nebraska will have it back. Let's take a look at tonight's better state assist brought to you by State Farm. And it comes from D'Angelo Russell. Yeah, this is, in a word, the sweet. He splits right there, as you said, Reese. And then he drops a little no look on a cutting tape. That's freshman to freshman. That's pretty good. And Shavon Shields working on Sam Thompson. Cut off. David Rivers starting the second half for Nebraska. Smith going to try to get out there. And it worked so well the first time. Might as well try it again. And just like that, Nebraska has cut an 18 point deficit down to a dozen. Yeah, that's three. He hit one in the first half from the corner. Smith did two in the right corner. It's really important when you're down as much as Nebraska is. If you're going to get back in the game to make something happen early in the second half, Sam Thompson missed. Jay Sean Tate after it slipped away from Petaway. <laughs> Jay Sean Tate. If you expose the ball at all against Tate, he comes up with it. He's so strong. The second chance. For the Buckeyes after the miss from Thompson. Now Thompson's going to drive it. Scott long on the three. Williams discards Rivers, puts it back up, and Amir will go to the free throw line. That's a perfect way to put it. You are a wordsmith. Discards Rivers. It's just exactly what he did. Sort of, watch him. This, this is a savvy veteran right here. Get it with one hand. Yeah. That's kind of a fly on an elephant's backside there, Rivers. He just got him out of the way. See, fly on an elephant's backside is far more colorful than this colors. <laughs> so we can learn from each other. You know, every time Amir Williams does something like that, Ohio State gets really excited. Like, man, just, just go, just go. Highly touted high school recruit who's had a solid career. Hasn't necessarily been the spectacular one, but if Ohio State is going to make a lot of noise in this Amir Williams senior season, he's going to have to play well in March, and, and you, they'll need him to play well in the NCAA tournament. There's no doubt, and he doesn't have to do much offensively. He just has to be a force on the backboard, rebounding and running. That away, strong, missed it. Tate with another rebound. Here comes Scott. 
knifing through the children of the corn. Now Russell has a whip from three. That didn't look tired. Picture of energy. Phil Jackson looking on. Wouldn't it be great if Phil Jackson on a May 3 like that stood up and started cheering, you know, going nuts? Would that be tampering? <laughs> Not yet, because he doesn't know exactly where he'll be in the draft order. Yeah, he, although he's gonna he's gonna have more opportunities than anybody else to be right at the top. Yeah. A driving bucket and Shannon Scott. Found a wide open Trey McDonald. The problem is Trey is not in the game at the moment. He's sitting on the Ohio State bench. Uh, for you bingo players out there, Ohio State, Trey McDonald should have redshirted his freshman year. It would have helped him. He would have had an extra year as a starter. Work, working with you, all of this inside material that I'm, I'm catching up on, I, I should have gone to the Tirico class leading into this game as Petaway gets in the paint. And the teardrop goes down. That was really nice. He was down. He was low. You did. You brought milk guns. I yeah. did. I didn't so, know you'd given them up for lunch. Yeah, I had some, I had some lentil swift slippage and switch, switch, switchage. Three giant boxes of milk guns over here on the side. Look at this. And the foul is called as Tate just bulls his way to the bucket. Rivers is going to be called for the foul. They only got Tate upside the head. You know, both guys uh, on one end, Petaway, that was the best move he's made all day. He got low, he got strong, he got in the lane, and then down here on this end, Tate did the same thing. Tate just was not going to be, absolutely not going to be denied. He was a teammate of Karis LaVert, Javon Bass, all played at Pickerington, one of the great pounds for basketball, both boys and girls, in the state of uh, Ohio. It was the first shot of any time that Tate has missed tonight. He's 6 of 6 from the floor. He'd been 1 of 1 from the free throw line prior to that. Well, Ohio State hasn't had a good night shooting free throws. Just 2 of 8. Now 3 out of 9 is the way he's 13. Pressure in the backcourt. And even a press is just designed as Ohio State backs up now to take some time off the shot clock when you're as challenged offensively as Nebraska is. You create issues, although this guy can get points in bunches. Petaway has it back to Rand. No good. And Tate tracks down another rebound. That's five for him now. Russell going to try for three. That one's long, and Rivers pulls it away for the Oscars. Tate on the floor, calls the turnover, got the timeout. So we'll go to break. Ohio State with a 13-point lead as Miles Huskers tries to stay in it. Clippers, Bulls at one. Cavs rock. Whether Okafor or Frank Kaminsky should be. I think Kaminsky just because of how he impacts the defensive end. I, you know, Okafor to me is kind of a liability right now defensively. But heck, you can you can say pick either one and you're fine. I, I would imagine the NBA is going to pick Okafor and probably Russell and you know, Kaminsky a little bit later. Thompson put up a tough shot. Not the way it'll stay on this end with Ohio State because the last timeout was a call one. Here's the media timeout. Why? 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 Bill Bolton would say. Why? Why? Introducing Data Stat. Academic All America Nebraska history. So his teammates and Tim Miles tried to get him to give a speech. And I think he said, go to class. <laughs> <laughs> He's a Man. biological sciences major, 3.7 GPA, and a pretty good year for the Shields family. His dad, Will, Will, who's already a member of the College Football Hall of Fame, was elected to the Pro Football Hall of Fame as well. Former great Nebraska offensive lineman as Russell took the shot, got hit late after the shot, and it was Rivers who got him on the arm. That's third foul on the Nebraska forward who's trying to slow down Russell. So D'Angelo is going to have three free throws and an opportunity to sort of straighten out some of the free throw struggles he's had of late. Ohio State is a team just three of nine tonight, and D'Angelo had hit just two of his previous eight. That's. 
That's not a great angle. Eh? Teddy Valentine called it, so we believe it. Like a little, little brush on the elbow, but you know what? With scoring the way it is in college basketball, I think you need to. I mean, and that, you know, I probably shouldn't have put in that qualifier, but you need to protect the shooters. No doubt about it. No question about it. Whether they're free throw shooters or whether they're jump shooters or you know, around the rim. I mean, one of the things I've, I've seen in basketball, there's so few big guys that little guys guarding big guys are, in, are, are allowed to basically do whatever they would like to big guys. Now, E.J. Hammonds here in the Big Ten just gets beaten up. And a bump with the body on Shannon Scott. He's called for the block, trying to stay in front of Petaway. The NBA on ESPN tomorrow. First up, NBA countdown gets it started. That'll be followed by the Heat and the Pelicans. Doran, Doran Dragic there on the left. And since Anthony Davis is hurt right now, getting little Tyreek Evans uh, making the promo panel for New Orleans. It's 8 o'clock Eastern time. Pelicans couple games out. Thunder and Blazers later. Did you Brad Doherty the other day say he thought that Russell Westbrook, best player in the NBA right now? You know, that's a stretch, really, in the way no, he plays. No, he's, he's been absolutely true. Who was the guy in Miami? The guy in Miami was Tyree Drummonds. No. With the, it wasn't oh, no, no, no. Uh, Drummonds, right? Was it yeah, Drummonds? Yeah, it was the Suns. It was Gordon oh. Drummonds. Oh. So he gets traded and immediately gets to be the face. On the promo pack. Yeah. I thought you were asking about Pelicans at first. So I wasn't listening to you as carefully as I was. <laughs> That part Rico did tell me. Yeah. He's, you're listening at all. You're one up on Mike. <laughs> hey, this is a different Nebraska team than it needed to be. Mm -hmm. Much more aggressive, offensively sharper, crisper in their movement. It's like they've woken up here, which you need to do when you're 18 down at half on the road, but good for them that they have. Oops. Alley -oop. Thank you very much. Russell to Thompson. Hey, this is absolutely Frank Costanza opposite day for me. This is. Hey, they're really playing well. Dunk. No one within 10 feet of them either. Did Frank have opposite day along with no, George? I'm Stewart? sorry, George. George Stewart, Stewart. Yeah, George. But Frank, we shouldn't forget that he started Festivus, so that's important too. <laughs> Here's Pitchford from the corner. Man. Put it on the line, calling it a two. Yeah, he's not going to play in the NBA, okay? So I'm not saying that. But Pitchford is what an NBA big guy looks like, the modern NBA big guy. Step outside, shoot it, be surprised when he misses, have great hands. And Trey McDonald inside the whistles. We take another look at the alley-oop. Well, this is about as easy as it can get. A little upstream. They clean the backside. David Rivers guarding Loving. He's hugging his man. And... Man, that's a nice pass, and you don't you don't have to be too fine with that pass. You can throw it a lot of different ways, and Sam Thompson is good enough to go get it. Rivers just picked up his fourth foul. A couple of substitutes coming to the scorer's table for Nebraska. They were just, Ohio State was just getting ready to run the play when they tried to get Sam Thompson a lob, and then the timeout was called. And they got Rivers out of the game with the four fouls. Ty Webster is checked in. D'Angelo Russell, he's grabbing his hamstring and sort of hobbling to the bench. You hope that's just a little bit of a cramp. He's had some problems from time to time with that hamstring. They take him out of the lineup. And Mark Loving going to the bucket. A little contact there, no call. It'll stay on this end with the Buckeyes. I like what Mark Levy's doing, though. He's not settling for threes. He, he went to the rim first half, didn't finish, went to the rim right there, got, got knocked around pretty good. And Shannon Scott will take it out front. 14-point lead inside 12 and a half to play as we approach next media timeout zone. McDonald was posting and asking for it. Scott didn't give it to him. Cam Williams gets it. And it's knocked out of bounds by pitch for Ohio State with two. That's going to be a problem for Ohio State. You, you, you mentioned it. He, he was posted, McDonald was, and he wanted the ball. And usually a guy, you know, they'll give it to a wanting postman. But, man, when you don't, you're relying on this from just okay shooting. Sam Thompson has been shooting it much better. He knocks down another three. He's hit three of them tonight. He has 15 points. And the Buckeye lead swells back to 17. Shields 
Shields who's really struggled from three shooting less than 20% on the season his first two years at Nebraska he shot better than 30% Good score, but the perimeter game has eluded him a bit as Thompson with an athletic move But couldn't get it to roll in goes off the knee out of bounds and Buckeyes will keep it and D'Angelo Russell Dealing with a little bit of a tight hamstring it appears Buckeyes up 17 At about 45 minutes time right here on ESPN. Hey. All right, Chris, here, Ohio State pretty much maintaining its halftime lead. They were up by 18 at the break, up by 17 now, but of more concern. The Buckeyes without D'Angelo Russell, who walked very gingerly back to the locker room as Mark Loving finds McDonald inside. Yeah, that, that's what Loving can do. Loving's a two-time Ohio Player of the Year in the largest division. He was really well coached at St. John's High School by Ed Heinshaw, and he can do a lot of things, and he's going to be, I'm telling you, as important as anybody. Shields misses from three. Scott to Loving. And he finds McDonald again. And Trey got his shot blocked by Petaway. Turan picks up the dribble. Now Ty Webster has it out front. Nineteen point lead for Ohio State going for its twentieth win tonight. The Shields penetrates. Petaway lets it fly from deep. McDonald and the Buckeyes. That's what I was talking about with Petaway. He brought it down, tried to explore, and then didn't get involved in the offense and waited to get it back and took a 24-foot you know, shot. And that, that just kills you. Cam Williams puts it on an excellent block out by Webster to keep loving off the boards. Now Nebraska pushing it a little bit. Webster. Tried to find Shields inside, but the ball was kicked out of bounds. Nebraska will have it here. Here is what has Buckeye fans holding their collective breath right now. D'Angelo Russell grabs that left hamstring, and here's where he appeared to feel the pain. He was holding the hamstring as he went out, and he just took himself out here. Yeah, he, he was pulling the jersey to get a sub, and then thought about calling a timeout, and then they... I'll tell you what you do as a coach when D'Angelo Russell wants to come out. You look away. <laughs> you just look away. Although, as you see his number yeah. tonight, he's got 11 points and 6 assists. In this particular game, at this particular moment, there's no need to risk it. No, no, no. I'm not saying to risk it. I'm, I'm just saying. Ordinarily. Yes. Right. Yeah, if he's tired or something. Yeah, I don't know. Foul. It's called on Bates Diop. That's his third. And Petaway will go to the free throw line. Duran just under a 70% free throw shooter. Missed the first one, and it's been that kind of stretch for the Corn Huskers, who appear to be on the way to losing their sixth straight. Petaway makes one out of two. Rivers guarding Bates Diop. Rivers playing with four fouls. Parker putting some heat on Williams. What that might have damn was saying today is the shot clock hits 4-10. Loving driving and the whistle is Ted Valentine calls a foul on the floor. Mata was saying that in the preseason, he was looking at the schedule and he felt as if they could get to this point in the schedule with their head above water in the Big Ten, that they would be in pretty good shape given the number of guys they had to replace from last year and so forth. Now, obviously, at that time, he didn't anticipate the issues that Michigan's had, and that was not a good loss for them on Sunday. But Ohio State's put itself in, in pretty good position. Obviously, the Russell injury is a concern. But this is a team with a healthy Russell that even as a, an eight seed where they are right now, according to Joe Lenardi and Bracketology, has a lot of the weapons, save the inside guys with the Big Ten standings right now, to be a matchup problem for a lot of teams in the NCAA tournament. I don't think there's any question. You know, that modest team obviously last year got beat 
Oh, by Dayton, tough loss, a grueling loss for them, and you know, but they're used to a little bit of tournament success, certainly in the Big Ten tournament. I, I, I totally agree with you. I, I have to stop here. That might be the worst free throw I've seen shot this year. That was shot <laughs> by a right-handed guy into the left. It was almost a net ball. He yeah, was to, yeah, net. On, the, on the wrong side. Yeah. It was so bad, it looked like it was going in from this angle. It went left. Now, Rivers had it, and Bates Diop took it away, and I think they're going to call a foul on him. You know, I, I think you can say what you said about Ohio State, certainly because of, you know, Russell and all that. But I think you can say the same thing about Iowa. You know, Iowa has played really well at different times. I think you can say the same thing about Indiana in terms of being a tough magic. When you can go make 18 threes, 15 threes, you know, you've got a chance in the, in the NCAA tournament. And I definitely think that uh, that Michigan State's going to make a run. They're playing really well. Now, they're going to have a dogfight tonight with Minnesota, but they're doing what Tom Izzo's teams do, which is get a lot better. Let's well, put up a wild shot. Abraham followed it in. Bates Diop, by the way, went to the bench with his fourth foul. Amir Williams by himself underneath and had the chance for the three-point play. We couldn't get the layup to fall, so he'll go to the free-throw line. Now, according to Joe Inardi in this bracket builder week, here are the teams in the NCAA tournament at the moment. Illinois, I believe, when I checked today, among his first four out. So right now you have seven in. At the end, and I know they're going to tell us, I get that. At the end, when Selection Sunday comes, and they do tell us yes. how many out of the Big Ten will be in. I think you're going to see that those seven right there, possibly eight with Illinois. I, I do, and I, and I think people that want to say the Big Ten is down or, or whatever you want to talk about, you're going to be disappointed because the Big Ten is going to play, I think, really well in, in the NCAA tournament. You and I were talking earlier today, or Bart Fox, our producer, and I were talking. I did Gonzaga. Two games, and one in the Garden, and one they lost at Arizona. Reese, I'm telling you, there is not a chance, in my opinion, that Gonzaga could roll through the Big Ten like Wisconsin did. Not even close. I think I think Gonzaga in the Big Ten night in, night out would be where a lot of these other teams are that aren't named Wisconsin in the Big Ten. So, but still upper division, Big Ten yeah, upper, upper division, upper yeah. and it might be second, like upper half, like up, you know, maybe second. Then, okay. yeah, yeah. I'm not saying they're going to be, you know, they're not going to be six and twelve at the end, but but they're not going to run through it like what Wisconsin has done. Okay, so you're sitting in that committee room. Given that, you then would give Wisconsin the edge on the one line over Gonzaga, or would you? No. Would you pay respect to what Gonzaga has accomplished in terms of record? What would you do? I, think, I would pay respect. I, I think right now I would go Gonzaga. I would too. Yeah. But I also think that story is yet untold. Right. There's not a, there's not a lot of margin for errors, even though they schedule great in the non-conference, as you know. Yeah. But their, you know, their West Coast Conference schedule doesn't afford them the same number of opportunities. That's look, right. well, Wisconsin well, shouldn't have to pay for that. I'm not saying that, but there was Wisconsin Villanova, I think, who are putting together pretty good cases to make one seat as well. Uh, the other interesting thing, yeah, Virginia and Duke. One of them's going to lose. Mm -hmm. all right? and both of them are going to win the conference tournament, so one of them's going to lose. So what, what happens if one of them loses another game? North Carolina plays different against Duke than they play against anybody else. I mean, that game with Duke was a... They won. They just didn't finish. So, you know, I, I, think, I think a lot of this as usually happens, it seems like, is yet untold. I just think there's so many different things that could happen, including Wisconsin and Gonzaga being the number one seed. And how about Virginia being without Justin Anderson and then London Parentes had to bang heads and apparently bloody noses. Amir Williams had the big butt. Oh, and it is officially turned into a fanny paddling. A 21 point lead with a chance to make it more from Amir Williams and D'Angelo Russell has returned to the Ohio State bench nursing a sore left hamstring and Jay Sean Tate in the meantime taking it all the way to the buck. Wisconsin still number one. It was that hey look all credit in the world to Maryland the other night. But every now but, you, know, you, know, you, know, you know this better than I do. You coached a game, you played at a high level. It was one of those nights where you would see Bronson Koenig a couple of times, for instance, drives the ball in, puts it off the backboard, it didn't go in, and you're like, 
how did that not go in? You know, Kaminsky somehow, you know, gives up a, an offensive rebound, which they never do. I think it just wasn't their night. I still think if I were ranking them, I, I would still have Wisconsin on top of the Big Ten, despite the fact that Maryland deserves credit for winning the game. What is what is uh, your guy say, Billis? Reasonable minds can disagree. Yes, 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 he does. Reasonable <laughs> minds can differ. But sometimes but, Jay but likes you're wrong. I'm right. I was going to say, but, but you're wrong. I knew you were. I knew that was the. Hey, look, it, I wouldn't. I you. would not put Maryland there if they hadn't. If that wasn't their third row. Mm -hmm. You know, one win does not get you to the point of being on the index. Now, how many? How many in a row had Wisconsin won prior to that? A few. <laughs> so it's like twelve. That's why I didn't drop them. That's why I didn't put them down a third or fourth. Hey, you know, the Big Ten's got some teams. Iowa played great. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, teams are getting going one way or the other. Indiana. Uh, going the other way. They, they're three and six last nine and lost to Northwestern. So, you know, what's amazing is in this Indiana in the 70s and 80s, I think it was, lost four total times to Northwestern. Last 12, Indiana has four total wins against Northwestern. Four and eight. Northwestern, Chris Collins is doing a great, great job there. And will continue. That's not going to slow down. No, I, I saw them early in the year against Ohio State. Actually, his pedal away comes up short. And it was in that stretch where Northwestern was seemingly losing every game by, you know, a possession or two. Just couldn't find a way to make the final game-winning play. Now they have. And you're starting to see their confidence grow. And Chris is doing a sensational job there. You know, Chris decided to play zone, and he got the zone from Jim Bayheim. I was talking to Coach Bayheim today, and you know, he, he had a talk. He and Mike Hopkins, the assistant, to Bayheim had a talk. Chris Collins in like, look, if you're going to play a zone and they score two or three possessions, stay with it. And he gave up 40 last night. Chris Collins and Northwestern did and stayed with it and got the win. Scott takes it to the bucket and gets fouled. That has uh, famously been one of Bayheim's one of his many strong suits. He almost likes it. Sometimes it seems if you knock in a couple of long ones early against his own because he starts settling for it yeah. later, right? Yeah, and, and, you know, he's very defensive of his own defense. And he'll tell you, he goes, look, all the guys are playing man-to-man. -man. They think they make all these adjustments and what they're going to do. He said, we do the same thing. No, we'll, we'll double the post from different guys, and we'll shade aside, and we'll leave a guy and play him in the middle. Same thing. And you know what? It, it, if you can do that and recruit like Jim Bayham does to the zone with the length, you're going to win a lot of games. When you were coaching, how much zone did you play? My last, basically in 10 years at Bowling Green, I think I lost my best player seven of the years. And like five or something, I lost my two or three best. So I ended up having the play zone. I did not like the play zone, but I had to. Uh, at different times because I was playing football players and they were going to learn man to man So you just got to go in the zone hope you win so uh, Coming from coach Knight, we never played zone and that was kind of my thing not to play it, but now I definitely would Now that was going to be my next question yeah. What you would do now is Shannon Scott what he would do now is drive and score 24 point lead for Ohio State that was a great play by Sam Thompson, stripping the driver without fouling, and then immediately he looked up. He and Shannon Scott have a pretty good play, and they should. They have pretty good chemistry together. Petaway gets it blocked from behind with a foul call on Amir Williams. He begged to differ. Here is that defensive play in a good hands from Sam Thompson. Yeah, before he traveled, Shannon Scott talked, and this is a pretty nice finish. I think Shannon Scott and, and Thompson are as good a duo on, uh, in terms of playing perimeter defense as you're going to find. The Wisconsin kids are great. You know, Brand, uh, Brandon Dawson's probably the best overall defender in the league right now. But those two are terrific. What? You know, I was thinking about this. Reese, you, you covered the Big Ten. If you were a coach in the Big Ten, obviously you got to prepare for Kaminsky and Russell. You know, those guys are kind of what we talk about. But I really think the two guys that are playing to where you have to set a defense is A.J. Hammonds because he's passing it out of double teams and Brandon Dawson because he's just been a monster here lately playing. You know, he's finally believed in what Izzo's telling him and kind of nodded his head instead of shook his head. They've, they've been waiting on that yeah. in East Lansing, too. And I saw Purdue last week in that win in Bloomington against Indiana. And Hammonds was an absolute beast. I mean, you have to set your defense yeah. for him. You, you have to. And 
many of our colleagues saying right now, if I were a coach in the Big Ten, I would be on the hot seat immediately. No. <laughs> Rivers. You're a handsome man, so... That, you know, I kind of know that, your job. Well, I think you'd be good with the alumni, mothers in the living room, that kind of thing. I don't know. I'm, I might get desperate to win, though. I might run afoul some recruiting oh, yeah. rules after a while. Look at Ohio State's leading scorers tonight. Jay Sean Tate with 18 leading the way, and Sam Thompson, who shot the ball well from the perimeter. If he can do that, adds even more. Tate's going up top to Thompson, working on Petaway. And Petaway, excellent defense to save the bucket. And now Scott knocking a loose ball around a little hot potato. Parker finds Shields, and he gets it in. Yeah. I'm not sure that was anything but a walk by Benny Parker, but they made it work. Yeah, he's grabbing his shoe. I think Benny's shoe almost came off of him there, causing some of the problem. Headed toward the four-minute mark. Scott off the window. Boy, oh, that was nice. Shannon Scott. He did what a senior should do. He read the defense. He wasn't looking for the ball. He was watching the defender and read the screen right at the shoulder of the screen. The ball was delivered perfect. You ever think about coaching? I um, I once coached a boys club team. I, I was never ejected. We were good, but I did once follow an official into the parking lot to beg to differ with some of his some of his interpretations yeah. of what happened on the court. Now, how old were the, the children? 12 and under. Okay, and how old was the ref? Uh, he was 16? about my age. No, I was in my 20s. So okay. Not nearly as mature as I am now. <laughs> it was a playoff game, Dan. Oh, no, I, I would assume. <laughs> I would assume. Oh, no. It was a playoff game. <laughs> Rivers from three. Well, look at Rivers. Rivers a kid that no offense at all. And now he's come in and you know what? Sometimes you just say the heck with it. And that would be huge if they could find another threat. Hey, you know what? Rivers is a point away from the double-double. He's got ten rebounds tonight. Well, he read that nice again. Tate thought about it and then finally did it. And couldn't get the second bounce. Pitchford with the rebound. 20 point lead, three and a half to go. Buckeyes are going to win their 20th. Got a meeting with the previously mentioned red hot boilermakers coming up for the Buckeyes. Pitchford. And Rivers has another rebound. Itself another bucket, David. Get a double double. And get a chance to go to the free throw line and do it. This will be Rivers' first career double double. If he can knock down one of these free throws, championship week is just around the corner. Colorado, they're tipping in 22 minutes' time. Reese, Dan, back to you guys. All right, Chris, we'll get the late season top 20 candidates. And by the way, the wooden award ballot that will be. For the finalist is due in the coming days. Here are some of the freshmen, the top 20 candidates. Stanley Johnson, who you'll see momentarily, the two guys from Duke who have been spectacular all year, Jones and Okafor and D'Angelo Russell, who has been similarly outstanding throughout the course of the season. D'Angelo is solid night tonight before leaving with cramp in his hamstring. No, no point in having him push it in the game in which Ohio State has been in control for quite some time. And Ty Webster, if this whole basketball thing doesn't work out, perhaps can be part of the black shirt for Mike Riley's new defense after tackling Jay Sean Tate going low. Obviously, I he did. fell down. He fell down. And yeah, but it, that's Jay always Sean a tough call. He falls down, and then Jay Sean Tate getting the ball kind of trips over him while he's already down there. And that's what Tim Miles was trying to ask the referee. Like, you know, how's that five guys on the ground? But. Because he got a trip? Yeah, right. Yeah. So Tate's had an outstanding night. 19 points now. Guy in the media room was saying, you know what? Phil Jackson came here to see Russell, but he may leave like in Tate. <laughs> He's nothing, nothing not to like. You see the president of the Knicks. Been a trying year for 
Phil as Tate has tied his career high with 20 points. Pitch for Throws it into traffic and Scott steals it, and that's one of the things that Scott does exceptionally well. And Scott has terrific anticipation, I mean, whether it's in the post and help side. He, he, you know, he used to say Larry Bird saw the game one Polaroid ahead. Mm -hmm. For those of you that don't know what a Polaroid is, it's a camera where you take a picture and a picture comes out immediately. But I digress. Um, and that's what that's kind of how Scott is defensively. He anticipates Pates to play one or two plays ahead of time. Tate. Career high. 22 for Jay Sean tonight. And to your point about Scott, he's third on the Ohio State Steelers list. So why is it I don't know Polaroid I don't know. than seeing like a digital picture yeah. ahead of time? Well, because Larry's a little older and they didn't have digital pictures, but I would think it'd be like a slideshow ahead, one slide ahead. But it was always one Polaroid ahead is how Larry Bird was described. Well, these are the types of discussions you have when a team is now up by 26 points. <laughs> Mark Lovings hit a couple of threes tonight and for one of the better three-point shooters in the country. He has struggled a little bit since that three-game suspension. Really hadn't found much offense. He missed both of his three-point attempts. But the last time I saw him in person, he was in here against Maryland, and he had five of those babies. Nine. Mark Levin can really play. I, I just would like to see him get out of his own self, like be more enthusiastic. Don't leave college. Or don't become a sophomore in college, junior in college, the same way you enter college. You know, you gotta, you gotta advance yourself. And Ty Webster driving and getting fouled. Jake Lorak checking into the game and getting in the box score with a foul. Ty Webster at the line for the rest machine. It's been a tough night for Siobhan Shields and Cornhuskers. About to lose their sixth straight game. Grand Petaway has had a season that hasn't gone according to plan after leading the league in scoring a year ago and leading his team to the NCAA tournament. Webster is both free throws and is not in the offering, barring some type of Lazarus esque rally in the Big Ten tournament for Nebraska this year. Bates Dia. I want to give a little shout out here to Jake Lorbeck who came in. He set three really good screens on that possession, which freed up the three point shooter. And he didn't screen for the three point shooter, but he made it tough on the defense to recover. Everybody got lost, and Bates Dia got the bucket. And Webster scores again. Now, how about if we take care of Jake on this inning and get him a shot? I think you have to. And I think Jake has to be ready. He has to think one pole right ahead. Screen, pop out, and shoot it. Oops. Webster steals the lob attempt. Final 24 seconds. And Warbach's not going to have any of that as Webster went to the bucket. Warbach getting his second foul. 21.3 to go. This Ohio State senior class is going to win 20 or more for the fourth straight year. In fact, the previous three years, they won at least 25. They have a chance to continue that streak as well. There's another of the seniors, Shannon Scott. Webster makes one out of two in the final Final seconds here. Let's let's dial something up to 34 and white. Yeah, somebody screen for him. He's already sent more screens in two possessions than Ohio State has. The student body across the way, they've written his name on a whiteboard and they were chanting Jake, 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 but I don't I don't think they're going to. They're gonna dribble it out. And Thad Mata for the 15th straight year.
is going to win his 20th game, and I don't think the Buckeyes are through winning. Every season in his career, he's won at least 20, and now he's just two wins behind the legendary Fred Taylor on Ohio State's